Okay, so before I get started, I've never really made a negative character review before. I like to think my videos are pretty positive usually, so be nice to me. This is just my day one experience with Shenyun and overall thoughts. So warning, Shenyun Simplified is a plunge support. Now I'm sure some people might find it fun and a new playstyle for your characters and I do understand that that's good for some people. But now I was hoping this wasn't the case but after testing I couldn't really find a team that disproves this but Shenyun's kit of enabling the plunge playstyle and buffing plunges isn't actually very strong by itself and plunge damage doesn't seem to be magically stronger than whatever you were doing before rather i believe shenyun's strength was balanced around her also being a healer and not directly that her healing is anything amazing but indirectly that her being a healer helps cover the slot in a Farina team whose teams of course need healers. So between both of the characters you're getting Farina's buffs, Farina's damage, Shenyun's plunge support and her buffs plus Shenyun's team healing and that's how I see Shenyun getting her full strength. But now because of this so much of Shenyun's niche is tied to you playing Farina with her and honestly I straight up don't really see many uses for Shenyun if you don't have Farina or if you don't plan on playing Farina with her which is a very important distinction because one of the major consequences I think people will notice for example you may be a Nervilet main who has him glued to Farina since Shenyun makes no sense in Nervilet teams like why would you plunge with him if you did get Shenyun this would make her teamless and that is a big issue because Nervilet is of course very popular at the moment and even if you don't main Nervilet you may be using your Farina with Al Haytham who has no real reason to play with Shenyun either maybe Linny who can't even do pyro plunges similar thing with the Navia who doesn't really care about animo supports and there are many DPS's you might already be playing who probably you're already happy with them using Farina in your new teams and so that leaves Shenyun teamless on your account and I know this might sound very silly and very try hard and a casual player can't relate but I genuinely think this is a deal breaker for many people like realistically how many Nuvilet mains are going to stop playing him with Farina so to illustrate the point I've put all the limited DPS's in this list showing the likelihood you might already be happily using them with Farina and you probably don't want to actually remove Farina from their team and put her in a new team with Shenyun. You've already got these characters as your favourite main DPS and you enjoy playing their teams, why would you care? I'm sure there's some you could probably debate but roughly speaking this is kind of what it is and as mentioned you'll notice so many obvious anti-synergies with many of these characters like many of these characters can't even plunge like bow characters having physical plunges or even Ayato or Child who literally can't plunge or like the Geo or Dendro characters who obviously won't care about an anime support and then even with Risley who I'm not really sure about you might already be happy with the team you already have maybe you've got a melt team maybe you've got a shielder you might not really have room for her anyway of course we can't entirely focus on old characters and old teams there is always the chance that Hoyaverse releases future characters that use plunges but maybe this is just it Maybe it's just Garming, Xiao, Diluc. Garming isn't even a 5 star but I did put him here just to show maybe they did give us one more plunge DPS and then that's it. Like after all you've got to remember they released Shenhe as a cryo support and then didn't release another cryo DPS until Risley almost 2 years later. Same thing with Goro and then Geo characters until Navia and she doesn't even use Goro unless you have high constellations on her anyway. There really is no guarantees we'll get more plunge characters anytime soon. You could say that even still Shenyun is an animo healer so at the very minimum she's just like Jean. Like sure you could probably use her in a Nervilet team just as the animo healer and ignoring the plunge aspect and technically you could but honestly Jean isn't the greatest character anyway 
I basically stopped using her until Farina came out and then even in most Farina teams personally I get more damage and utility from Bene or Kazuha for example. But yeah the intro was just to clarify those concerns and I wanted to make it clear that I don't know how big the target audience for Shenyun's combat kit is and I want you to know what you're getting into if you do think about getting her. With that being said let's get into some mechanics. So the first thing that's quite important to know is that many characters have long plunge animations but you can skip some of that with either a dash or if they're polearm character then a normal attack. So yeah, broadly speaking, most character weapon types can do the dash cancel, except polearm characters who had to completely change how polearm punch animations worked before Shao's release in 1.3 in order to balance Shao. So with polearms, you cancel with a normal attack. It's a bit more tricky to do than the dash, but regardless, it is very important to try practice this with whatever DPS you can play since the faster you plunge the more damage you might do and something you also notice is with the dash cancel characters it does help your survivability quite a lot so what makes a dps good at plunging here are some considerations first of all plunge multipliers so this is a bit confusing but basically the low high plunge damage here is the aoe plunge multiplier and this is the most common plunge damage you'll see but there's also this plunge damage here which is actually the additional collision multiplier you get if you direct hit an enemy, meaning you'll get both of these. But it's very useful to know that these multipliers here are only one part of the damage formula. Like there is also how much attack your character might have. Also like character A might have 10% more of a plunge multiplier here, but character B might have all these buffs in their kit. So a character having a good starting multiplier is nice, but it isn't the be all end all. Another factor is AOE. So Claymore characters have very long swings and this makes their plunges have a ton of AOE. This is of course a good thing and importantly this also makes it easier for you to get both the plunge AOE damage and the plunge collision damage. Now obviously a character like Xiao, even though he has in his kit increased attack AOE which makes his plunges very effective, because at the end of the day he's still a polearm character and not a Claymore character, it's not necessarily easier for him to get the collision hits. However, I also do consider another factor to AoE, which is if your plunge DPS is doing a reaction, like a vaporized reaction, you have to also consider, are they actually going to get vapes in AoE? And how reliant is their damage on getting these vapes? And from my testing, the reality is the vaporized plunge characters like Garming or Diluc, getting vaporizes consistently is pretty scuffed. It's actually very rare that I'll constantly be getting vaporizes. In fact, what often happens is my first few hits will get a lot of vaporizes, but after a while I will flip the auras and I will just start doing raw pyro damage and a character like Farina will be vaping. Although you can get lucky and constantly vaporize too, but that's not very reliable. And as for dealing with multiple enemies, Farina in particular, her pet targeting is usually focused on one enemy. And although she does have these coordinated anima attacks here, which can swell Hydra onto enemies in AoE, you also realize that with plunging, you're probably staggering enemies and gradually pushing them further and further away from each other. Especially a huge flaw in these Shenyun teams is that they don't actually have grouping to start off with. These are definitely huge factors to vaporizing in AoE. Whereas a character like Xiao, because he doesn't care about reactions and he just hits raw animo damage, this can make his AoE feel much smoother in practice. And then another factor is energy generation. And this is another thing which I realized is surprisingly important, which is a lot of characters generate energy with their skill, which is fine in a normal playstyle since you are probably using it. But if you're doing a plunging playstyle, say for example with Diluc, then you might have to go out of your way to use his skill, meaning you have to go out of your way to generate energy with him on field, which may not be a big deal for Diluc because he doesn't really care that much about his burst. But without energy generation, you are crippling the rest of your team's energy economy which is quite a big deal, especially with Shen Yun. You need her burst in order to do plunges in the first place. 
these sorts of punch teams already have energy problems as it is and you don't want to make it even worse for example with Diluc, i did find it best to use one skill before i start plunging and then i add some skills after i run out of plunges just to generate some more energy whereas one good thing about garming is that his plunge skill will be constantly generating energy throughout his dps window although it's surprisingly not that much and you can end up running into problems if you don't build enough ER on him. So let's get into the characters and teams. Just to preface, unfortunately, I don't have Xiao on my account, meaning I can't actually test him, which is unfortunate because after all this testing, it is pretty clear that Xiao actually has better synergy with Shen Yun than other characters and you could argue they were kind of designed to be played together particularly as I covered earlier Xiao not needing to worry about vaporized consistency and him being Animo himself you don't need to worry as much about energy problems which as we'll get into are probably the two most frustrating issues with the other Shen Yun teams. She even generates five Animo particles with her skill which is very nice and I was surprised with that. I'm sure I will test out Xiao Shenyun in future videos, but for now, the review will focus on other characters like D Luke and Garming. So, D Luke Dragon Strike, I've been testing this team out a lot in the Abyss. First of all, Bennett C6 is very important for D Luke and for Garming too, but this makes it so you don't need to cast D Luke's burst to get his Pyro Infusion which is important because his plunges just deal more damage in this setup. However, I did notice, especially because this team lacks any grouping, if you're in AoE content where enemies are spread out, you will need to be casting Diluc's burst just so you can move around from enemy to enemy and still be able to do pyro plunges. The next tip, as I alluded to earlier, is dash cancelling his plunges is not just for extra damage, but actually helps a lot with his survivability. And between the plunge animation and the dashing animation, Dilu gets quite a lot of invincibility frames. On the plus side, I guess getting hit will help with Farina buffs. So as long as you don't get staggered and lose plunges, it's fine. Second is about gearing. I actually used Rain Slasher the most. I think this is probably his best four star since even though something like Serpent Spine is usually stronger, there are a few issues in this team. Serpent Spine ideally needing a shield is a big issue because you don't have room for a shielder in these teams. And also it taking 20 seconds to stack per chamber, meaning each time you reset in the abyss or maybe each time you teleport in the overworld. This is way too annoying, especially with the cooldown resets from last abyss. If you reset an abyss chamber, you want to get back into the action quickly and you don't want to be wasting time like the cooldown patch never happened. Besides, EM is really good here since almost all his damage is from reactions as long as you are getting the plunge vapes so it's now more important than ever you could also see i have a ton of rain slasher dupes next i've got some tips about shen Yun's gear unfortunately i found the vv debuffs are very difficult to set up plus there are other practical issues like for example in the current chamber 2 it's a multi-way fight so spawning enemies won't be debuffed and then in chamber 3 the hydro topper obviously doesn't allow pyro vv swells so what i found is the new healing set is actually pretty decent and it's a good alternative to VV. I then ended up using Noblesse on Bennett, although you can use Instructor, but you need to make sure you have enough ER. And then the last tip, as I mentioned before, using Delete skill every now and again is very important for the team energy. I found using one before I started plunging was a pretty good time. You might notice if you plunge too quickly, you might not actually get Bennett's Pyro Infusion, meaning your first plunge might actually be wasted with a physical plunge, which is very cringe. So alternatively, Garming is the four star plunge option and he is also on Shen Yun's banner. And I was very surprised with him, especially at C6, he feels very strong. Like this is quite clearly such an overloaded constellation. You can see in my gameplay here, even with R5 Rain Slasher, he is new king for big numbers which is something I didn't really expect. Like the strongest four star DPSs like Shang Ling and Shinobu, they aren't hyper carries with huge nuke damage. I guess the closest equivalents previously would be like playing Yunfei in a melt team or maybe a super jacked Hazel. But this is pretty cool with C6 Garming. 
you do get that feel of a new limited five star hyper carry how his gameplay works is he has his skill which automatically jumps and then you manually plunge with a left click a bit like kazua and then whilst that is on cooldown if you have Shen Yun and a C6 Bennett, you can then manually jump and then manually plunge. The way his burst works is, is that it will periodically reset his skill. So after you cast his burst, you alternate between either one skill plunge and then two fast manual plunges. But from my experience, that's very RNG if you vaporize all the hits. Or alternatively, you can do one skill plunge and then a slower manual plunge and you just making sure the enemy has hydro before you plunge each of your hits but you can see it is possible to vape with all the faster plunges but i can assure you this is a lot of rng to pull off and it takes a lot of resetting to get this rng still it's very satisfying if you can pull it off and you can see it boosts his dps window a lot my one tip is to just pay attention to the enemy's hydro application so then you can adapt on the fly how fast you want to be plunging. Oh yeah and the burst itself is a pretty good nuke. It homes onto enemies so it will basically always hit and always vape if you are using it properly. Just don't use it too early versus the PMA for example as it won't lock onto anything. But now I want to get into Garming's issues which is that his constellations are so strong especially his C6 is so strong. I actually think you'll honestly be underwhelmed with him without this. Like all my gameplay here has been with C6 which is quite unfortunate since although his C0 is guaranteed from a lantern right reward if you pick him it takes a huge amount of luck to get a c6 in one banner so i think only a minority of people will have a c6 this patch another issue is although he is constantly dealing nuke damage i was still having issues meeting the 947 phase one threshold on the pma boss and his teammates don't really do much damage his overall team damage isn't as strong as you would think and these big numbers here are almost all of your team's damage especially once you realize as i said there are a lot of energy problems in these teams i did end up needing favonius sword on farina a lot and to be honest after a while i did just try favonius codex on shenyan too so two favonius weapons and still having energy problems that is pretty cringe and if you don't get the team's burst then obviously your damage will plummet also just a tip for PMA specifically, if it flies in the air then wait until the red circle appears before using Garming's burst. It has a slight delay for its attack so it will hit by the time the PMA drops. Looking back honestly I will just add that these teams are pretty mechanically intense and whilst they are not the hardest things in the world. There is a ton of different clicking and clicking different buttons. These non shao teams can feel very clunky in single target let alone in AoE and truthfully I can see many people being excited trying them out and immediately you're like nope and you just stop having fun. There's also other issues mostly stemming from the fact that you can't really change teammates in these teams. It seems to be fairly fixed that you want Farina, Shenyun and Bennett which means you're always going to have to deal with the weaknesses of these characters like Farina and Shenyun. Like number one that the damage is heavily RNG due to the Hydra application. As I alluded to earlier it's not just your main DPS's buffs but also Shenyun's additional damage buff scales from your DPS's multipliers too. So for example not vaping you're losing out on your DPS's EM, their reaction bonus, maybe a rain slasher passive. Inconsistent vapes not only affects those but it affects this too which is quite significant. You'll notice very early that Farina's Hydra application is not consistent. Like I recommend trying chamber one of the current abyss maybe a hundred times and then notice just how often you are vaping every hit. Most of the time whether you're playing Garming or D Luke it will scuff up. Here's also another issue where you get more damage losses if you don't aim your burst. Remember if you miss an enemy you still use up one of Shen Yun's 8 plunge stacks and like I said before sometimes you might even accidentally do a physical plunge and again that's wasted too. Although these characters do have decent AoE it's still far from perfect especially with mobile enemies you will be whiffing plunges 
And that's another point altogether, which is that these teams perform worse in AoE. Of course, one being that Shen Yun's plunge buff can only apply its damage effect to a single opponent at a time. But it's more than that. These teams not having a grouper combined with the previously mentioned inconsistencies of Vaporize, which is more scuffed in AoE than single target. And it also affects multi-wave fights, like it's complete RNG whether a spawning enemy will get hit early enough by the Hydro character to vaporize. And if you plunge before then, the enemies might be stuck with Pyro so your DPS is never vaping and it's just your Farina vaping. And then there's even more AoE issues since Shen Yun's skill randomly targets an enemy. This was most obvious for me in the current field of Chamber 1 versus the PMA minions. The amount of times that Shen Yun has flown across the map to a random enemy is ridiculous. Number 4, Shen Yun obviously isn't Kazuha, meaning she doesn't have easy double swirl setups with Bennett in order to buff and debuff for both Hydro and Pyro. And trying to do that with Shen Yun, for my testing, it wasn't really feasible. And yeah, as I mentioned before, after a point, I just didn't even bother with VV and I just used the new healing set instead, since you can't really go wrong with this. Number five, Shen Yun has long animations, even if you don't do all three jumps of her skill. And in addition to that, Freena is already famous for her long animations. This means that regardless of which team you play for both Garming and Diluc teams, and probably even Shao teams too. The setup times for fully buff these teams is atrocious. And it means even if your actual damage numbers are very big, you might not even get to utilize a full damage window and the enemies might have already moved around or changed phase. Remember that since Shen Yun is kind of single target focused with her buffs and no grouping, this means that her teams are supposed to be strong versus bosses, but most bosses have different phases and phase transitions. And that's why in practice, as I've covered in my previous videos, many bossing teams thrive when you can do fast setups with them and deal the damage quickly, which is called front loaded damage. And the closest thing you can do in these teams, for example, is skipping out on Farina's burst, since you basically have to use Shen Yun's skill and burst. But of course, skipping out on Farina's burst, you are risking a big damage loss if that extra time doesn't really benefit you enough. Number six, as we've alluded to throughout the video, these teams are very burst reliant. And of course, many teams in Genshin are burst reliant and they don't really function as well if you're short on energy or if you're saving your burst for another chamber. But Shen Yun teams suffer quite heavy from this since without using her burst, if you're not using Xiao, you can't even plunge. Luckily, you can still brute force since most characters weren't designed around plunge spam in the first place. Like you can just use d loot skills at the end of a chamber. It's not the strongest, but it'll get the job done. Number seven, it's very easy to overcap on crit rate. Like Shen Yun gives crit rate here. You might have Garming C6 gives 20% crit rate here. There's also a lot of claymores that give crit rate too, like Serpent Spine or Verdict. You might also be using Marashose Hunter for 36% more crit rate. And this is even before factoring in crit buff cards in the Abyss. And this can make your builds hard to optimize. Like for example here, I'm um, 65 crit rate with the Crimson Witch set, meaning plus 20 from his C6 and plus 10 from Shen Yun's buff. And I'm basically already at 100% crit rate. And there's no point intentionally using worse artifacts. You still want to use the best artifacts you have. So overcapping can definitely be a problem. And even though Diluc doesn't have Garming C6, he ascends with crit rate, so he does have his own problems anyway. And same thing with Xiao too. Now there's also the option, why not play Shen Yun with characters that can do jump cancel combos? And since you're already jumping, you can squeeze in some plunges too. And I tried some, but I wasn't the biggest fan. So let's take Klee for example. Why wouldn't you play Klee with Shen Yun? It's that you really want Kazuha or Sucrose to a lesser extent. See, for example, Klee's skill does a lot of damage if everything hits. And what Kazuha does is he increases the likelihood of this happening in two ways. So you might already know that Kazuha can suck in the mines and this can help them explode onto enemies, but there's actually another reason to. First of all, if you notice by default how far Jumpy Dumpty bounces ahead, and this also makes the mines spread out ahead too. Especially if you double skill, the first mines have good AoE, but probably not enough to explode onto the enemy. So what Kazuo Suction does 
is he actually pulls in Javi Dumpty and keeps it closer to Klee. And this makes the mines more controlled and then you can even use Kazuo's skill and then it's very easy to make sure all the remaining mines exploded. But then it's also that Kazuo can buff her entire kit which is very important for DPSs who have multiple sources of damage like Klee has her normals, her charge attack, her skill, her burst. So you don't want to throw most of that out the window just to get a few plunges. And that can be an issue for other characters too, like say for example Yaimiko. Sure, you can spam some plunges which is probably stronger than spamming normal attacks. But Yaimiko's skill and her burst are much more important and Kazuo would buff those. Now another jump canceller, you might say Hu Tao. And whilst I think you could calculate plunge mix up combos to be a good option, from my experience, once you factor in normal plunge team issues like needing to reposition and run around a lot either to chase enemies or to make sure you are getting a collision plunge, especially on a character like Hu Tao who already consumes a lot of stamina and with pole arms you need to normal attack cancel instead of being able to dash cancel, all these honestly made her plunge experience quite scuffed and I would just say just to stick to her normal charge attack playstyles. So overall, whilst it's still only my thoughts after one day of testing, so I'm definitely not concluding that she is bad or anything, but what I'm saying is I think she has her uses in a few teams, namely Xiao, Diluc, Garming, and maybe a few others that people can figure out. But if you don't play these teams, I don't really find much use for her, which is quite disappointing, especially for the Chinese New Year character, the Lantern Rite character, particularly as we covered in the beginning, if you pulled Farina to play her with your favorite DPS, you might be very satisfied with those teams and most DPSs here don't actually care to play with Shenyun and Plunge. So again, realistically, how many Nervilet mains are itching to separate him and Farina just to play Cloud Retainer? How many Linny mains, Navia mains, our Haytham mains? I don't really see it happening much and that honestly is a bit of a deal breaker. It's kind of like old teams back in the day fighting over who takes Bennett. And once you've already got your Bennett team, a lot of people ended up just saving their primos and not even bothering with others. Like if you were very happy with your Bennett in your Raiden national team, then you probably didn't bother getting Ganyu on her rerun in order to play a Ganyu melt team because you couldn't play your Ganyu team and your Raiden at the same time. On a side note, I am pretty disappointed that even though Shenyun is an animal healer, that doesn't seem to be much synergy with Ganyu or with Shenha. Like Ganyu can't even do cryo plunges. So that was pretty disappointing. But of course it's just day one and I'll be looking out for strats and teams that other people have cooked. I may change my mind on her but for now I really don't recommend her unless you main Xiao, Diluc or you've got a high constellation Garming with a C6 Bennett. Anyway thanks for watching and bye for now.